So I've been doing a ton of game testing with the MacBook Pro with the new M2 chip. And one of the interesting things that other tech reviewers, for example, Max Tech have found is that the new MacBook Pro M2 actually has substantially slower read and write speeds compared to the original M1. And in their testing of the baseline MacBook Pro with 256 gigabytes of storage, and what they found is that there's actually a space for a missing NAND chip on the M2, whereas on the original M1, there are actually dual NAND chips. And if two chips can be accessed at the same time in parallel, then that's gonna offer better performance. However, the baseline M2 only has a single NAND chip and it's gonna run much slower than the M1. So I'm in the lucky position where I managed to get my hands on the M2, which is not the baseline, it's the slightly upgraded model with 512 gigabytes of storage. And today, we're going to be confirming with benchmarking and tests and also a little teardown as well whether the m2 macbook pro with 512 gigabytes of storage also suffers from the same problem is the upgraded m2's ssd slower than the m1 and is it also a single nan chip as well so if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest mac gaming news so the first benchmark we're going to do is Blackmagic's disk speed test. Here we're comparing the MacBook Air M1 with half a terabyte of storage against the MacBook Pro M2 with half a terabyte of storage as well. So here we can see that the M1's write speed is 525 megabytes per second faster than the M2. And furthermore, the read speed is 119 megabytes per second faster as well. What's interesting is that this is a much smaller difference than what Max Tech experienced when they compared the M1 and M2 MacBook Pros. However, it still indicates that there is a substantial downgrade when you go to the M2. Next up, we are doing a disk speed test using the tool called Amorphous. And here it looks like the M1 is faster than the M2 on virtually every single category. So as far as I can tell, the M2 SSD is only faster in one instance, where it's marginally faster in random 4K Q depth 64. So the next question is, is the slowdown caused by a lack of a secondary NAND chip on the solid state drive or is there another cause? So what I decided to do was to do a little teardown of my own MacBook Pro M2 with 512 gigabytes of storage and the results were pretty surprising to say the least. So after painstakingly taking off the back cover we can see that the M1 and the M2 both have two NAND chips for their solid state drive. So therefore the lack of a second NAND chip and lack of access to parallelization is no longer an excuse for the slower solid state drive performance of the M2. So therefore the only conclusion that I can actually draw from this is that the NAND chips in the M2 are downgraded compared to the M1. And in a way this is a worse conclusion because it means that Apple aren't just cheaping out by missing out NAND chips from the base models, they're actually downgrading the NAND chips that they're using in themselves. And this is kind of bad news because this could be the start of a trend where Apple starts to downgrade individual parts just because they can get away with it. Now, does the difference in speed actually matter? Realistically, you're not going to notice day-to-day -day performance differences. The only time you really see it is when you're copying large amounts of files. So for example, here we're copying 144 gigabytes of game files and it's estimating that it's going to take two minutes. So I don't know about you, but personally, I don't really care whether a file transfer takes two minutes or two minutes, 20 seconds. And that's basically the difference between the M1 and the NP solid state drive speed. But how about with gaming? Is there any difference in load speed here, even despite the fact that the M2 is a substantially faster chip? Well, here we can see when we're loading the game Grand Theft Auto 5 that when we get to this particular frame in the game, the M2 is only 134 milliseconds slower than the M1. And really in real world usage, most people are not really gonna notice a difference. And it's not really enough of a factor to say, choose the M1 over the M2, especially as the M2 is faster in almost every other category, including gaming as well. So here we can see GTA 5's benchmark. The M2 is about 20 or 30 frames faster. and this isn't even the best example of M2's improvement. In this benchmark of Metro Exodus, you can see that the M2 is nearly twice as fast as the original M1. So given a choice between a performance metric like frame rate versus solid state drive speed, I'm gonna choose frame rate every single time because that's gonna make the biggest difference to the way that I use my computer. So it's a little bit worrying that Apple have decided to downgrade their solid state drive NAND chips. And it's a real shame because the MacBook Pro with the M2 is over 18 months newer than the original M1 and yet it has a slower solid state drive. However, it's sad to say that unfortunately most people and most customers are just not going to be able to notice the difference in day-to-day -day usage. I really challenge anyone to actually see a difference without resorting to benchmarking tools. However, I hope that this isn't the start of some kind of trend where Apple start to downgrade components and hope that customers don't notice. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think about this particular downgrade. If you found this video useful, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.